Hello and welcome back to the Smite Console action here. I'm Anatoly, joined by Taco this time for some more North American action. Back at it for the last set of the day, and it should be a really fun set to say the least, considering that we're actually going to get a glimpse into a Strictly Business versus Obey Alliance. Obey Alliance is going to be the greatest opponent that Strictly Business could face at this point. Early on today, we did see Sword Gaming just dominate Starboys completely in a nice little set here, but Strictly Business, you know, they did find a split against Astral Authority and Elve, but do you think they have any chance here against Obey Alliance that doesn't have a defeat yet? I, I don't know. Obey Alliance has just been looking so dominant ever since the land. I I'd say they've really cleaned up their gameplay, and with their new acquisition of the team, Mancer, I think that they're just as strong as ever, if not better. Honestly, I think everyone around this team, Obey Alliance, specifically looking at Jelling and Mifflin, those two frontliners make it pretty easy for this backline hunter to make that comfortable transition. And that's exactly what you want to happen every single time. If you have a team that you know you can rely on and trust, because Mancer, it's not like he's completely new to the team. He's somebody who's been with this squad since the start for the most part as their sub. So now that he's just getting to play in the actual limelight himself, I think that he's really just enjoying the time there. Well, he's learned and grown from the dark, but now it's time for him to shine in this set against Strictly Business because this last set, he was played Kronos both of them. Not the greatest performance. Needs to kind of step it up if he wants to allow his team to get into that world's contention here, especially for DreamHack Valencia. Speaking of stepping it up, it seems as though Strictly Business want to take on the action with Osiris in that solo lane, I'd imagine. We have seen it flex picked into the jungle thanks to Mifflin himself, but on the side of Strictly Business, I'd imagine that's solo lane all day long. I'm not surprised here. You know, you ban the Bologna, you take the Osiris, it's just easy one, two, three step maneuvering. Fafnir going to have some objective control for Strictly Business. Obey Alliance, though, they have some long distance artillery guys here. Some will conquer Pokey from a distance as well as Soul, but fighting fire with fire, Kernos has some good objective control as well. Have to appreciate the Fafnir current lane. It's incredibly potent and you have to be very cognizant of where your positioning is on the map pretty much at all times in that dual lane, especially because of just how much pressure they can have. But I love the Jingwei, Sol, and Sun Wukong. It might not look like the strongest draft in the world, but I would honestly rate Sun Wukong pretty highly right now in the meta. I don't know about you, but I love this Jingwei pick for Mancer specifically that wants to try to play it relatively safe, not take too many risky plays, but if he does get far behind, he could make that important comeback in these team fights. But banning away some mid mages against strictly business, the Toth and the Scylla, some of these long distance gods as well. It's just interesting because you have Delta Marine who I guess you kind of just trust to be able to play whatever his team feels like. And I mean, he's got the soul already locked in, so I know they're feeling confident with him on that, but showing that he won't need to worry about those big burst all-in gods, which is I think what Strictly Business is looking for, especially when they're throwing a Nemesis up on the board. But before the Nemesis, it was Obey Alliance taking this Erlong Shen. PB and Jelly likes to play Warriors every now and then, and these kinds of early rotations from such a Warrior is going to find some easy poke potentially for Soul, especially if he decides to build into that Shogun's Kusari, just amplifying everyone's attack speed. I, I just love the draft from Obey in comparison to Strictly Business. Strictly Business have very strong early game presence, but I think that it requires a lot of execution from the Nemesis and Chanka, and then you need to rely on your Fafnir as well to be that ultimate backline prospect. So would you say this is execution versus objective control? Because I'm looking at Strictly Business, and for that Fafnir, that's some pretty good objective control in my opinion. It's a lot of objective control, but I think that Obey Alliance probably has the better objective secure with mm. that soul even though it takes a little bit for her ultimate to get off, I would still rate that slightly higher than that of Changa. Well, heading into the first game of this two-game set, Obey Alliance versus Strictly Business. How are they going to perform here against such a strong caliber team? They did find a split, like I mentioned, against Astral Authority, which is no easy task. And it's not an easy task in the slightest, but I, I do believe that we haven't been seeing the same Astral that we saw at the land. They seem like they've been struggling a little bit. And whether or not that's due to just getting a little too comfortable after securing such a dominating victory or just not having as much time as before to really work on the team chemistry after the fact, I, I would say it doesn't matter too much. I, I just know that Strictly Business are trying to make an impact and take a game off of Obey. So it's actually going to be Mifflin playing this Erlong Shen 
Baron in that jungle role while PB and Jelly picking up that Sobek. Dwarves playing that Sun Wukong. Normally he plays a lot of these aggressive in-hand gods, but not going to be the case this time around. Going for a more ability base. A lot of exchanges between the soul lanes here. I actually think that I saw Dwarves discussing this on Twitter, believe it or not, that they would rate Sun Wukong higher than Bologna and Osiris, and I believe that's probably the main reason why Obey let this pick go through. There's some several options for the Sun Wukong to play very safely. You're looking at this god to be able to clear from a distance and safely. A lot of contention along these fire giant elementals, and it's Nick with caught in a bad spot, gets rooted into place. The Sunder comes out as well, and that's gonna be first blood. Delta Marine getting first credit. The Sunder didn't even connect, they just had so much shred potential onto him that it didn't even matter whether he was sundered or not. And now it's looking like Mancer is also getting the out clear onto Fatal Ghost, which you don't really anticipate seeing Jing Wei out clearing at the start. And also the red buff on Fatal Ghost on the Kerner knows he's using his clear to try to go for a poke instead of trying to clear the wave. He's going to lose some of that very important gold and ex experience under that tier one tower, allowing Mancer now playing the Jing Wei more comfortability and also, going for this Ninja Tabby, talk to me about rushing Ninja Tabby on Jingwei. See, Jingwei is probably one of the only ADCs right now that you can efficiently get away with this on. And the main reason being, she still has her passive, which is in effect. You won't go nearly as far as you used to, but you're still coming out right in front of that T1 tower line, or like right into your T2 tower, excuse me. And that's already far enough up the lane to where you can choose to just farm those back harpies off cycle. And when you're grabbing those back harpies consistently, that's pocketing an extra like 200 ish gold. Would you like to see her though go into the Warrior Tabby instead since she does get that more attack speed off of her persisting gust or does that extra 50 gold matter early on? I, I think the extra 50 gold not only does it like I, I wouldn't say it matters but I just think that Ninja Tabby is better in general on Jingwei. You, you get the attack speed buff as well from her um, first ability. So if you knock yourself up and you're just consistently poking out with the Ninja Tabai, you're pretty much good to go. Obey aligns with that one kill thus far. Looking for some more action along that mid lane, but a nice little shield. Going to negate that stellar burst along with the heal from Chalibur. And this mid mage here for Strictly Business has a lot of on and off games. Having sometimes that confidence issues where he might be qu second guessing himself sometimes and you could truly see out of it, but whenever he does get some momentum, he just has no fear. I think Shalimber just needs to feel really comfortable around his jungler in order to perform as well as we've seen from him at the times that he has been on point. And speaking of performing well, it's where he's just a little bit off the mark there with that tiger stun. You know, Nick, with playing this Osiris, whenever you do go into that ethereal form by having those eight stacks, you're just so slippery. You're able to go in and out of the minions as well as gods and making it more tricky to hit. And despite having that earlier death, he is sitting at level four. And this is a very easy target for Mifflin to make this rotation to take advantage of Osiris that doesn't have Lord of the Afterlife available. But just like Mifflin's looking for Nickwood in that solo lane side, I'm almost certain that as soon as Reminis hits level 5, he's going to be doing the same exact thing. Although, it's a little bit harder to secure a kill as Nemesis onto a Sun Wukong who's got that cloud to escape into. A lot of level 6 is on the side of Obey Alliance. Jelly and Delta Marine could start forcing some team fights as the speed buff respawns for Strictly Business. Nothing that Reminis can do except for watching Shalibur getting plucked back into it. Lurking in the water should secure this one, but Delta Marine going to avoid a supernova connecting. And there's just nowhere to escape to, but the same could be said for Delta Marine. He's trying to go into his vulnerability, and he manages to do so. Sunder not on the mark here. Reminis able to avoid it the time being. The Wild Hunt not, not on the mark here. Jelly's going to retreat into safety for now. A draconic form from inbound, but it's not going to... It's just going to be a watch completely. Obey lines to get a kill, and they walk away cleanly. That was a strong rotation by Strictly Business, just unable to really lock anybody down. You had the ult from Reminisce, and you figured that that was going to be enough to help secure the kill onto the Sobek, but Jelly just finding a way to maneuver around everybody. Shalibur didn't even use his Purification Beats to avoid the pluck from PB and Jelly. It's just like one of these things where, I don't know if it's this awareness level or what's going on, but you can't be in a position where you get plucked into your teammates as an early level 5 Changa, unless you're like maybe looking for a tactical feat 
feeding bait potentially. Do you think that's what he was going for? I think that he kind of just expected his immunity to get him to dance his way to freedom, pretty much. And then once that ran out, he realized, oh, wait, I'm actually in the center of a Sobek lurking in the waters and the no one Nova. around to save. <laughs> you know, you're getting cooled off with your feet and then you're getting rained on from the sky with the heat. Just nowhere for him to go early on. That's going to give two early kills for Obey Alliance. Heading into that six minute mark, having a pretty comfortable 1,000 goal lead as they've been able to strip away some of the speed buffs against Reminis. And looking at Erlong Shen against a Nemesis, how does those two late games stack up? If anything, I, I feel like most people would probably favor the Nemesis into any Warrior or Guardian matchup, but with the way that Mifflin tends to play, I, I feel as though he's able to achieve that aggressive but team-oriented style, which I, I think a lot of junglers could really look at him and try to learn a little bit more from, just because he really understands his limits. And Mifflin is one of these loud and boisterous kinds of players that you really want in your team to be able to make the calls so whenever he gets this early game momentum and making the calls, the rest of his team can easily capitalize off of it. Not able to find anything around that mid tier one tower for Obey Alliance. Instead, having to retreat after Strictly Business strips away some of the vision here. And look at all this vision on the left and the right at the six and a half minute mark. There really have been so many more rewards placed lately by teams in the console league. And it's actually really impressive to see them learning to adapt to having that vision and just wanting to, I guess, progress themselves as a team because if you have map vision, it helps out significantly in competitive. Speed buff respawning yet again momentarily here. Obey Alliance are prepared for it. Finding a plug onto Shallowberg. The Waximu not being used yet. Only onto PB and Jelly, but the Jingle Bang from Durst finds its mark. And this time around, Mifflin, he couldn't find any way to escape, or Shallowberg, excuse me, but right now it's going to be Reminis locking down Mifflin, who I, was looking pretty good to go, surrounded by his entire team, but Nothing to be done about it. One for one thus far. Jelly serves up Nickwit in the midst of that team fight, but not wanting to capitalize it as Obey Alliance wanted to secure a blue buff invade for the second time in a row. Reminisce is just the unfortunate victim of a bad time. And despite the rotation from Fatal Ghost on the right, left hand side, Mancer was just quietly farming away. And for good reason, too, finishing off those Devil Gloves, wanted to finish stacking it up. And he's in a very nice spot right now, already having the Ninja Tabai and 36 stacks. Like, right around the 40 stack mark is usually where you have that little bit of a power boost from the Devos. Plus, he's working on the Ickfall already, and he's not behind in the slightest. There hasn't been any ganks placed into his lane, which... You can't really gank a Jingwei. Now, the Jingwei needs to be punished somehow, and you're not going to find it unless her defensive relics are not available. But having the Aegis instead of the Purification Beats, because the fact that Reminis is relying heavily on that ultimate to strip away your health and your protections takes away some of your movement speed as well. But with Jingwei having that ultimate for CC immunity, she doesn't really need that Purification early on. Not at all, especially. Like, the, like you said, the ultimate is just the ultimate getting out of jail free car it's so good and there's really nothing you can do as you watch a jingwei kind of just fly away and goes through walls as well in the mid lane obey alliance just still looking to farm it up here gold fury hasn't been flirted with by either team quite yet instead electing to go for some of these buffs with all this vision control i don't necessarily blame either one of them i wanting to play it safe and kind of play a game of chicken of like you start the Gold Fury first. I, I I don't know. I would say that Obey Alliance is a little bit strategical by them because they we saw it in the in last week's set that they played where they kind of just put these teams in a chokehold when it comes to the buff cycles and they just slowly deprive them of their own jungle farm, getting slow leads that eventually build up into the larger ones. And I, I think that it's a very tactical way to go about the game because you're not necessarily pressing the objective super heavily, but when you're depriving the enemy team of gold so so much it just makes it so much easier for Mifflin to snowball on this warrior jungle which is all he really wants to do it's kind of like what energy did to elevate uh, in the Saturday's European games where they just comfortably waited around for some of these mistakes from the opposition that's exactly what Obey Alliance is doing here in the SCL strictly business still needs to find some points here if they want to start climbing the standings but Obey Alliance they've been looking so dominant all across the board despite losing air cougar here Mancer 72 has filled that role comfortably he's just allowing Mifflin and Jelly to control the front line early pacing 
And now that Mancer has the Ikfal online, this could very well be him looking to solo the gold fury at any stage if Shrinkly Business aren't careful. He can get away with it on Jingwei. Would you say level 12 is that sweet spot for Jingwei? Hold that thought, though, having to use that agility just to get away. But doesn't matter because she's Jingwei. She will be back in the mid lane still. Obey Alliance looking for the speed buff invades. I would say that it's a sweet spot. And speaking of sweet spots, it looks like Mifflin's trying to find Shrinkly Business. Is he engaging? But the solar burst from Soul is is so strong. Everybody's on the run. Shalibur getting plugged in. Not using the beats, but it doesn't matter. Obey Alliance retreating. Dwarf showing his face. It's a four on four, but a lot of members from Strictly Business are low. Shalibur doesn't have the high level heal here. Nikwi goes up and down. Dwarf goes into the cloud. Wild Hunt from Fatal Ghost making the rotation, but here comes Mansur as well. Jelly's the first victim. And now it's Dwarves on the back line, still trying to handle Shalibur with this decoy, but it, it doesn't matter. That's enough to deter Strictly Business to back off. And the one for three exchange, plus the buff yet again? I don't know about you, Taco, but I'm looking at the mid matchup here. There's a two-level disparity from Delta Marine. They're really forcing these team fights. I feel like, because Changa is not the level that she needs to be to start sustaining her team. It's not even just the level Changa needs to be to start sustaining the team. It's just Shalibur can't really do nearly as much damage as Delta Marine. Delta Marine has the comfortable ranged poke. We talked about it when we saw the Soul Pit go through in the picks and banning stage. It, it's just so much easier for you to launch your Stolar Burst, and it just deals too much damage. Mancer now sitting pretty at level 13. Gonna start up these Oracles here. Not gonna start the Gold Fury quite yet as Red and Purple buff is on the left side, while the right side, Dwarst and Mifflin invading the blue buff, taking that away from Nickwood. We haven't really talked about the solo lane matchup quite yet here. Sun Wukong against Osiris. We see the Mystical Mail here for the Sun Wukong instead of the normal Gladiator Shell, but now getting dope 1v2. Nickwood gonna get taunted back into place. Dwarf's tanking the tower for as long as he can. The jingle band from a distance finding it. And that's... <laughs> That's uh, incredibly unfortunate for Nickwood to die right there because he wasn't even sundered. Both of their sunders were on cooldown. They just had the damage available. And despite having eight stacks of his passive, despite finding the tether onto Mifflin, it still wasn't enough to survive. The height of Nami in line gives you a lot of physical protection, but it doesn't give you that health that you really want. And I think that the health is really the impact that is starting to make all the difference here because you have health on the side of Dwarves. That's why he was able to tank as many tower shots as he did. Bay Alliance commanding the game thus far. 5,000 in the lead, 12 and a half minutes in. Shelly going into that tier one tower, looking for a potential plug. It doesn't even mount, matter if it's Shalibur or in down or inbound here. They're looking for this 500 gold. All that Delta Marine wants to do is just take this tower because as soon as this T1 tower falls, it's going to make it all the more difficult. And speaking of falling, Fatal solo. Ghost, actually, yeah, 100% clean solo kill. Mancer isn't even low in health. Not at all. Two level lead here, going for the Fatalis, having the red buff to follow up. Jelly not on the mark with that pluck here. And yet again, Mancer showing what he's really capable of here, despite thinking outside the box with his Ninja Tabby actually executing in his own lane. Can you imagine what's going to happen when Stingway gets this Fatalis online? It's going to be necessarily over, I think, like because now Tier 1 Tower's gone on the left side. It seems that Mantis sticking around. This Tier 2 is taking quite a bit of damage, already about 50% of its health, but with two members here from Strictly Business, the attention here will be this early Gold Fury. Obey Alliance are melting this pretty quickly. And Mantis didn't even use his ultimate against Fatal Ghost. He clean soloed him. Just nothing for the Cardinals to do here. Level 13, he didn't have his Executioner finished quite yet. I'm not sure if his Relics were on cooldown or what the case was, but Reminis was actually relatively close around the corner. Gold here was reset here. Good job by Strictly Business, but yet again, Reminis just cannot find any speed buffs. There's worst strips that went away from him. I think it's just so difficult for Reminis to really get anything going because that's kind of the downfall of a Chang'an to hold that thought. You've got actually Jelly looking to make something happen in the mid lane. Inbound is just going to hop away though. It's Fafnir. It's one of the benefits of that Guardian, but not beneficial for Shintley Business. It's Obey Alliance being able to secure that gold period for free, and now it's Mifflin who just wants to brawl it out with Reminis. Shalibur finding his death against Dwarves, diving the backline into the sky, goes up, gonna come back down, trying to find the dragon on inbound, no mana for him. Osiris on Nick with trying to save his teammates life over the wall with the flail, but the jingle bang from a distance, finding the third victim. 
And it looks like Mancer wanted to completely break away from his team there. Fatal Ghost and Nick were just not sure which direction to turn in. Just nothing that, honestly, Strictly Business could do when they're this far behind. Looking at the second Relic selections here, you have level 10 Reminith, 11 on Shallowbird, 10 on Inbound, and there's 10 Relics, I'm sorry, 9 here, as Jelly hasn't back to base quite yet. And this is giving them the kind of advantage that they need to start grouping up, take advantage of the second Relic slots, take advantage of Shallowbird that doesn't have that strong of a heal quite yet. Yeah, it's incredibly rough when three members of your team haven't hit that level 12 threshold yet. So missing that second active, especially onto two carries, that, that makes any fight difficult to survive in, especially with how tanky Doris has made himself. You see that Bill, Mystical Mark, and Breastplate of Valor. He just wants to walk at them a, the entire time. A lot of physical defense, and for good reason, too, because Changa doesn't have that much damage in her kit. She's more of this kind of sustained utility kind of goddess that wants to find that uh, multi-stun on that Waxing Moon, consistent healing for her teammates. So it makes a lot of sense as to why Doris is going for this. But tell me this, Taco. Why, or how, rather, can Strictly Business get back into the game with a 10,000 gold deficit. At this stage, it, it might be more relying on Obey Alliance to mess up than anything else. Mifflin's already in pursuit of Nickwood. Three members, four members surrounding him. There is just nowhere for him to go. Too many ultimates expended there. The lurking in the water and the taunt as well. One dead on the right, another on the left, as Mancer's barely able to escape that one. So still keeping two members from Strictly Business busy as the rest of the action is going to be around Reminisce. And they can't can't even chase him down, and Mifflin just standing there taunting away at Reminisce recognizes that his ADC is in danger, but Mancer's Jing Wei, and that's the fun part about Jing Wei. Oh, it's gonna be Fail Ghost in a lot of trouble. Doris takes out Shalabros. He was trying to get back into contesting that portal demon, but it was actually Delta Marine that was able to secure that with Jelly taking it, and without any hesitation, instantly Obey Alliance gonna get this fire giant, it seems, for free. And just look at how disoriented strictly business are right now. They actually have no idea where to go. They, because the second that they look towards the duo lane, there's action happening on the right. Nick Liquid's dying to the entirety of Obey Alliance. They're securing a portal demon while Mifflin's messing around with two, three people in mid lane. It, it just seems as though they, they're just so uncertain, but... Oh my god, Reminis wow. just got two shot completely. Nickwit's gonna get deleted as well. These are two early picks here. Obey Alliance grouping up with their Fire Giant, just gonna get this tier two tower for free. And if you're strictly business, what are the comms like? What do you think they're talking about heading into game number two? I think they just need to be talking about their drafting, maybe focusing a little bit more on the early game stage and having some more pressure in that mid lane. I just think that the Chang'an wasn't able to provide as much pressure, but they <laughs> put a lot of a beat down onto Mifflin. Still going to lose their Phoenix, however. Yeah, but Mifflin. Dwarf's Mifflin, might fall too. Mifflin just taking the Phoenix for too long. Dwarf separated from the rest of his teammates. But honestly, if there's two members you would want to lose on Obey Alliance, it's anyone but Delta Marine and Mancer, the two hyper carries of the team at this point. So great objective control thus far from Obey Alliance. They're able to get the Fire Giant for free. They get themselves the first Phoenix of the game. And this is putting Strictly Business in a really rough predicament. Losing a Phoenix right around the 18 minute mark, that is that is something to try and come back from. I I don't really see too much hope for strength the business, at least not in this first game. But for game number two, like I was saying, they really just need to focus on having a little bit more impact in their early stage presence. If you're going to draft the Nemesis, you need a mid laner that can clear. So either not Nemesis or not Changa, rather, right? You have to separate these guys yeah, from you your composition, you feel like? Pressure has to be available somewhere, and I just don't feel like it's really being provided by Nemesis and Chang'a. You have it in the solo lane, you've got Osiris, but again, when you're facing off against two bruisers, such as Sun Wukong and Erlong Shen, uh, Nemesis just really doesn't bring the bang for your buck. That's true. Even though Osiris getting caught out when he was level one, there are two Mifflin's root around those Fire Giant Elementals. One of those two Sunders was all that it really was needed to secure that early first blood. And Mancer just going to run away casually against three members here. Still having Fire Giant for around a minute and a half on three members from Obey Alliance. They found the right side Phoenix. They're taking their talents here to the dual lane. That tier two tower is on its last legs. 
And what's also interesting is that Mancer hasn't even opted into building an Executioner or a Chen's. He just went straight for the crit from the Fatalis, relying on that 10 penetration from the Fatalis. Do you do you think he went for the Rich because of how successful Obey Alliance is in teamfights, or do you think this is the correct path either way? I mean, either way, you can never go wrong with Rage on Jingwei just because of her built-in crit uh, ability. Yeah, the second ability giving you that AoE in hands that you really need as well. Once you get some points into that, giving you about 15% additional here. Nickwit trying to zone out, but he's going to get taunted back into place. Nice little turtle knockup from Mifflin, taking out some of the health here while Delta Marine with 100% heat melting that second Phoenix on the left. And just absolutely nowhere to go. And it's looking like Manster wants to go in, however, already chasing down inbound inside of their base, getting ulted by Reminis and popping the Angus. But it's a Jing Wei after all. Mid He'll be Phoenix. Just fine. Mid Phoenix can't get touched here. They have to go through that tier two tower first. Girdle means go forward, strictly business. But it's actually a Bay Alliance that's able to still stay relevant in the team fight. Utilize that sustain that they have from the Fire Giant. Lurking in the water being used here. Jelly trying to help him peel for his backline. Supernova as well, having to retreat is the two squishies here still in a lot of trouble here nick with though not wanting to really chase this one down and i can't blame him i mean girdle means go and it looked like obey alliance tried to pop their own as far as engaging is concerned but now it's jelly and mifflin who's got the entirety of strickland business trailing behind them meanwhile mancer is getting a free goal here still fire giant available in about 55 seconds once that respawns as long as obey alliance are healthy and prepared they can easily start warning around they have a nine, almost 19,000 gold lead. There's really no way I feel like that Strictly Business can defend both the left and the right. On top of that, prevent Obey Alliance from getting that fire drawn. Yeah, that's like I said. Strictly Business is kind of just going through the motions right now. They need to be focusing on gate number two and improving their drafting for that second round go because I, I, I think that this one is pretty much signed and finished up. Would you rather have seen them try to go for more gold theories with that Fafnir? They couldn't really afford to. That was the primary issue, and I love what Obey Alliance was doing, and it goes back to just the pressure they were exerting on the right-hand side of the map into the solo lane jungle, because they weren't permitting Strictly Business to receive any of their buffs. So even if they looked for the gold theory with the Fafnir and the Coerce, they just would have kept, they would have lost even more than what they did, and I, I imagine that Obey would have just kept pressuring down the solo lane side because early on, Gold Fury isn't worth that much, but experience is worth a ton. That's true, experience definitely the key component. That on the hidden resource here of Smite that you don't really truly appreciate here compared to the items that you purchase from the shop. 22 and a half minutes into the game, Bay Alliance secured their second fire giant of the game. They're heading towards the right hand side as that Phoenix has respawned, sitting at half health. It's very easy now for Obey to take that one away from. Them. But the highest level for the side of Strictly Business is current level 17, and the lowest for Obey Alliance is actually Jelly on the Sobek support at 16. I, I'm not sure how much longer Strictly Business can hold out against this roster. It's never a good thing when your enemy support is higher level than four of your own members. Obey Alliance going for their last and final siege here. They're trying to find the plug. Jelly slightly off the mark. Second Phoenix going down. The rotation here from Mancer trying Oof. to find something here in the mid Phoenix. Shallower just lost a huge chunk of his health. And speaking of chunks of health, Reminis barely able to avoid both of the Sunders from Obey Alliance. That's going to be probably the last and final push here. Girdle means go here from Strictly Business. They need to hold this one a little bit longer. Reminis pops the shield, but Doors goes into the sky in the clouds. Shalibur does a nice dance to avoid the plug here. Titan sitting at about 70% health here or so. Girdle means go on the side of Obey Alliance. Mancer finding one onto Nick with nice little turtle knockup. You see that First shred? game Obey. Did you see that shred? They didn't even kill Strictly Business. They just went straight for Titan damage. And while only one member of Strictly Business died, the Titan was just completely destroyed. There was just nothing for the Titan to do. You know, without it, the towers, the phoenixes, you're at the most vulnerable form. Obey Alliance still looking clean. They have yet to, lose, to lose a single game so far. This split here. But... On the other side, Strictly Business, they have gotten splits before in the past, so maybe they could sweep this one under the rug and then maybe look for more. But who would you say out of Obey Alliance definitely made the impact this game? 
It definitely made the impact. I would probably just have to credit it to Jelly. Mm-hmm. He, he was initiating so much with his plucks and really catching Shalibur off guard. And then on top of that, you didn't have to worry about your dual lane side or helping out your hunter because Mancer picked up the solo kill. That's true. Mancer did make that one solo kill, which we didn't really catch on camera here. We might have seen it here in some of these replays, but I like the mentality that he had. Here it goes here. The crit coming into full effect using that purification <laughs> beats, avoiding that wild hunt. Really well placed there. He just really caught Fiddlecoast completely off guard. At that. I don't think that he was expecting for Mancer to and completely commit to that. And when the crits came through, I mean, those crits were just absolutely shredding. It's also because of his build, right? Avoiding yeah. that kind of a starter item allows him to escalate himself to that mid to lake him, getting the uh, Fatalis before his opposition, getting the Rage. He was just in the right place at the right time with a lot of his damage. Opay lines looking so strong in game one. <laughs> and